Number one. I live in a semi-rural area. It isn't too sparsely populated, but there are some pretty long stretches of road where there's nothing but corn for about a 10 minute walk or more. The road I live on in particular runs through some farmland and then down into a forest with a few houses here and there. Before I moved away to college, I would often take long walks from one end of the road to the other. It was about an hour's walk, but it was good if you needed to clear your mind and get some exercise. Anyway, two years or so ago, I was taking my daily walk and was in the middle of an abandoned stretch of property. A car pulled up beside me and the driver rolled down his window. He looked to be about in his 50s and the car looked pretty old and dirty. He called out to me that his phone had died in the middle of his drive and he needed to call a friend to ask him something. He asked if he could use mine. I remember his voice sounded strangely confident for a man addressing a stranger in the middle of nowhere. I pulled out my phone, but then realized that he could be trying to steal it. After all, if I gave it to him, there would be nothing stopping him from speeding off and leaving me without a phone to call the police. I told him I was fine where I was and that if he told me his friend's phone number, I could call him myself and relay a message. The driver said all right and held a piece of paper up to his window, telling me that his friend's phone number was written there. Looking closely from far away, I realized there was nothing written on the paper. He was just trying to get me close to his car. A sense of dread came over me. I looked left and right and then told him no and walked quickly in the opposite direction. When I looked back, the man was staring at me from out his window with the strangest expression I've ever seen. Almost a glare, but too cold and unemotional. Then he rolled up his window and drove away. I walked quickly back to my house and stayed there for the rest of the day. I don't know if that man was trying to rob or kidnap me, but I'm glad I didn't approach the car. Number two. This happened to me a little under two months ago. Just for some background, I'm an average height blonde girl who can handle her own at the best of times, but it's not obvious and I still get bad attention. To begin, I had been out all day with three of my friends. I won't name the place for safety reasons, but it was a common area for people our age to be out and about, and wherever you go, you're sure to see a friend or a person you know. The day went by with nothing out of the ordinary until it was time for everyone to head home. Two of my friends are twins, so they went home together. My other friend was getting picked up from the same place, so they walked together as I went my separate way to wait for my dad. This wasn't worrying me, as he's picked me up from the same spot plenty of times, and he wasn't one to be late. He was picking me up from a local pub. It has a little car parked to the left of it and wide steps leading up to it. I usually wait at the bottom of the steps. Once I got there, I did as usual and sat patiently with my earphones in, minding my own business. The pub was on a main road, so cars were flying by. To pass the time, I'd examine the cars that passed. So I'm staring off at each car that passes and then I noticed a certain car passing for the second time. This time, I looked at the car and the driver in detail. It was a rusty old blue Mini Cooper with a cheesy bumper sticker, something to do with growing old. It appeared to be a man driving possibly in his 60s. He had white short hair and a white beard. He smiled ear to ear as he drove past looking at me. Assuming he took a wrong turn or something and just happened to pass again, I didn't think much of it and smiled back. Just a few moments later, he drives past again, this time waving frantically at me as he drove on this busy road. This time, I didn't respond. Red flags were going off in my head, telling me to move out of sight from the road. Instead, I texted my boyfriend I was with at the time. My phone was on low battery. 
I distinctly remember because I was praying for it to just hold on until I sent the message. Let's call my boyfriend Ryan. The message to him said, Hey Ryan, not to worry, but I think there's a man watching me. Within seconds, my phone buzzed. It was Ryan. Where are you? He said. Then my phone died. My dad was already 10 minutes late at this point, and I was on the verge of tears because I couldn't call or text him to hurry. The man in the car continued to pass me. Sometimes he blew kisses. Sometimes he made sexual gestures with his hands. The car came closer to the curb each time he came alongside me. Every so often, he'd slow right down as he came past me. He looked at me and bit his lips. I was horrified at what I was seeing. He stalled his car in front of where I was sitting, just for an excuse to stop and stare. Then out of nowhere, Ryan appears on the other side of the street. He was waiting for a break in traffic and runs across the road to me. I stand up and he runs up to me and hugs me tightly. He asked me what was going on and I explained what the man was doing. We sat down on the steps in silence. The man passed one more time, but this time he just glared at me. His smile was gone. He looked furious to see Ryan there with me. We waited another five or so minutes before my dad came. We told him what had happened and he thanked Ryan for coming to me when he did. A week or so later, I was with Ryan and we brought it up in conversation. I asked him how he knew where I was and how did he get to me so fast. He told me that he assumed that's where I'd be as my dad usually picked me up from there. Ryan lives on the other side of town from the pub. He told me as soon as he and his dad finished work, he saw my text. So as soon as he got home, he began walking and when I didn't answer, sprinting to me. I'm not with Ryan anymore. We finished on pretty bad terms, but I'm still thankful he came when he did. Who knows what could have happened. Number three. One summer night in 2013, I headed over to my friend's house to hang out with her and her roommate. We had a lot of fun and time flew by. It was already 1 a.m. and it was time for me to go home. My friend offered me to stay the night, but I refused as I hate staying at other people's homes. I'm just not comfortable. Then her roommate suggested I take the bus since it was coming soon. Once again, I refused and told her I was going to walk since it's night out and I love walking, especially while listening to music. I'd like to mention that my friend lives in a sketchy area. A lot of drug dealers and sketchy people live there. Also, I was a teenager but looked much younger and still do. I was always mistaken for a 12 or 14 year old. I began my 30 minute walk listening to music. About 20 minutes into my walk, I noticed a white van driving the opposite way I was going. Being late at night and walking alone, I instantly thought of the typical cliche van stories. I chuckled and told myself to stop being so paranoid. As I continued walking and the van got closer, I thought to myself, what if the van stops? What if they are really some crazy people inside that van? Being the paranoid person that I am, I stopped my music while continuing to walk and dialed 911 on my phone, but did not press the call button, just in case. To my horror, the van slowed down and pulled over really close to me, still facing the opposite way. My heart started beating fast. WTF? Is this really happening right now? What do I do now? I just stood there, frozen, looking at the van to see their next move. The driver's window rolled down. Jenny? A woman in her late 40s to mid 50s asked. No, I am not Jenny, I said. I felt a little bit of relief when I realized it's just a woman looking for someone. Jenny, is that you? She asked again. Once again, I told her that I was not Jenny and I slowly began to walk again while still keeping my eyes locked on her. There is no way she didn't hear me as she was very close to me. The door slowly opened and the lady stepped out. Jenny, is that you? 
she said while slowly walking towards me in an almost crouched position. I stopped walking and just stared at her. At this moment, I'm totally freaked out and my fight or flight reaction kicks in. I am not Jenny, I shouted a bit annoyed. My voice giving the indication that I'm scared, I quickly glanced over to the van. And then, in the passenger seat, I saw a scruffy looking male just staring at me with a blank face. Okay, I need to get the flock out of here, I thought to myself. As the woman got closer, she glanced at my phone, and I think she saw that I had 911 on my keypad. She backed up a bit and said that she had mistaken me for someone else. Still a little bit spooked, I nodded and began walking again, still keeping my eyes on her. I watched her get back into her van. She rolled the window down again and asked if I knew the directions to some street that I had never heard of. I am very familiar with my city, and that street either didn't exist or it's somewhere normal people don't go to. I guess she was trying to convince me that she was really looking for someone. Yeah, right. I lied and told her that I'm not from the area and walked away faster. The van then sped off in the opposite way I was going, and as I turned the corner to get onto the main street, which was completely empty at this hour, I started bolting it down the street. There was a convenience store nearby, and I was heading towards it. I have the habit to look behind me since I'm so paranoid, and as I turned my head to look behind me while still running, I saw the white van behind me. They saw me running and I guess they realized that I was onto them if they had any ill intentions. I ran into the store and the van did not pull into the parking lot. Instead, it passed me by and stopped at a stoplight. Then I watched it disappear into the distance for good. To this day, I don't know whether they had any ill intentions, or if they were really looking for someone, or if they were really lost. But if they were lost, why did they make a U-turn and come back my way? I myself think the lady thought I wasn't worth the trouble, since I wasn't as naive as they thought. I must say, I'm thankful that I'm so paranoid. It might have saved my life. Because only God knows what kind of intentions they had. Anyhow. Creepy lady and scruffy looking male, I never want to see you again. I'd also like to add that you should never walk alone at night, especially if you are a girl. You never know what kind of creeps are on the streets, up to no good. Creepy Mina here of the Worst Nightmare Channel. I hope you enjoyed those three stories of women and their drive-by creeps. Uh, I just want to mention that the subscribe button now that I've put in my new outro card um, is kind of like a dead one now because they've removed the ability for me to link behind it. So if you haven't subscribed already, just go all the way down below near the comments underneath the video and click on that button. And of course, give me a comment, give me a thumbs up, Share on your favorite social networking platform. Follow me on Twitter as WorstNightmare6. And always remember to stay safe.